Yo, 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 it's Bernard, aka the Scarlet Spider, the guy who is once again pissed this week. And this is Samir, the King in Black. Tell everyone why you're pissed, Bernard. Well, can we get the intro out first? Then I'll go to that. And we are the Angry Blurs Podcast. Well, the nerds are black and the nerds are angry. So I am pissed because, okay, so remember how I've been talking about for like pretty much the past year, how I pre-ordered this Radical Edition from Limited Run Games, right? Comes with the shutter figure, the little arcade, the sprite stickers and all that crap. Yes. It has been delayed until the second quarter of this year. So something I paid two hundred dollars for on June thirtieth of twenty twenty two, I will possibly not get until June thirtieth of twenty twenty three. So at this point, I just want my money back, man. I don't even care anymore. I bought the game on PS five. It's just like I'm I'm over it. The hell with limited run games. I mean, if I would have known like crap like this happens, I would have never uh, freaking pre ordered that thing. What you got to say about that? Uh, supply chain crap or something? Well, sometimes pre ordering, once you finally get the item, it, you just feel better that you have it. And it just seems like it's. Samir, it's been almost a year since I bought the damn thing. Yeah, like they sent out an update. It's like, hey, guys, um. Uh. Yeah, some of the some of the stuff still isn't done, so now we're gonna have to push it back a quarter two. Well, I mean, when you finally get it, it's gonna be amazing. No, I'm just gonna email someone just like yo, just give me my money back at this point. How much did you pay for it again? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred of them things. You know what that could have went to? Anything else? So we got to give a congratulations to Mr. John Favreau, director of such films as the first two Iron Man films of the MCU, uh, Swingers with Vince Vaughn, and he also played Foggy Nelson in Daredevil. He has uh, he will be honored on February 13th with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 11 a.m. So if you guys want to watch that, I'm pretty sure it's going to be streaming on like YouTube and everything, and it's also going to be on TV. But yeah, we got to give a congratulations to him. And this is not the John Favreau from uh, Pod Save America. This is the guy who plays Happy Hogan in the MCU. So, yeah. Samir. Yay. So, um, <laughs> so apparently Steam has, is reportedly getting classic PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. I heard. I mean, congratulations to Steam, I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, Metal Gear Solid Five, Phantom Pain, uh, Ground Zeroes are both on Steam right now, but that's pretty much it. So you're going to get the premise of the whole collection soon, which is, I guess it's pretty cool if you want to go back and play those games. Uh, I wonder what other uh, what other uh, PS1 and PS3, uh, pretty much all those titles are going to get. Like, is it just going to be Konami games, or is it going to be, like, other, you know, PS, PS PlayStation cl- classics from previous uh, consoles? I mean, I mean, we, we I mean... Did they announce like any of your other games besides like you know the two that you just said? No, I mean that's it. Just like the leak, just uh, it looks like the leak just happened to be about Konami. So it looks like that's mm-hmm. all we're getting so far. But who knows? You know, time will tell. Yeah, I mean it might just be old Konami stuff. I mean, if Steam actually you know decided to you know make a lot of their stuff Mac compatible, then I would have a Steam account, but. It is what it is. And I don't want to put Parallels on my computer. Parallels just basically lets you run Windows programs on a MacBook. So, like, if I had, like, a a network key for Microsoft Windows that was Windows only, I could download Parallels and do that. That's how I originally hacked my uh, Super Nintendo Mini. I mean, there are a lot of titles coming to uh, PC this month, so... Uh, we have Returnal coming in twenty the twenty first. Uh, Tells of Symphonia remastered coming to uh, February fifteenth. Uh, Octopath Traveler that's a, that's a that's a multi platformer so that really came out anyways. Yeah. Um, what else we have here? That's pretty much it. Yeah, those those are mostly it right there. But yeah, I'm excited about Returnal because I, I finally played this game all the way through instead of worry about you know freaking roguelikes. All right, your turn. But you've been playing it on PlayStation. Yeah, no. You just no, want to cheat. I don't want to cheat. I want to mod. It's different. It's the same. 
It's not, but it's different. If you say so. All right. I do say so. So Rupert Grant, who we all know and love as Ron Weasley, and you know that creepy fan in the Ed Sheeran Lego House video. I, I don't think I've seen anything else with Rupert Grant in it. I know he's got, he, well, Serpent just wrapped up on Apple TV Plus, so I'm probably gonna watch that um, next week or something. I don't know, but yeah, he basically said Warner Brothers should reboot the Harry Potter franchise and do it as a TV series as opposed to a film series. So I kind of agree. Yeah. So he said, yeah, it's about time, you know, for you know him to pass the baton to a new Ron. Didn't mean for that the rhyme, it just happened. But yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. You can flesh out the books a lot more. I mean, because you got like diversity. An hour and a half, two hours. I mean, they're. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to make Hermione black. You see what happened when they did that with Harry Potter in the first show. Okay, so here's the thing. So the problem is they retroactively did it. All right, and then she went at like she was always black. No, she wasn't. No, Secondly, no, no, that's not what happened. She said, "I never said she wasn't black." Hmm. The, the illustrator, but she, but she wasn't the comic. I mean, not the comic book. The um, the cover the book. Yes, the cover illustrator, and well, he also did the illustrations for like the beginning of the chapters as well. So I don't know if that was a scholastic thing or not. Because I mean, I'm pretty sure J.K. Rowling never. So. Met, I mean, she probably did, but you know how they are in the UK. You know how they feel about black people. You see what they did to Meghan Markle all like what two, three years ago. Well, like I said. Point it's is, kind of racist over there, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, super. Yeah, I get it. I'm just saying. Yeah, her money was over. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, I, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying that maybe if they relaunched it, one of the one of the uh, not even the the uh, not even the ethnic group backgrounds of the characters. I was more line, more talking about the houses. Like I thought it was a narrative misstep that they made all the main characters from um uh, from Gryffindor. When in fact they should have made all the main characters from different houses, so it would have been cool that Harry was from Gryffindor, maybe Ron was from Hufflepuff, Hermione from uh, uh, Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw, and then maybe they had a Slytherin friend. And in fact, I think they they dropped the ball on Slytherin because Slytherin kids, when the Death Eaters took over the school, they were pissed at everyone else. They didn't want to sit there and torture people just because you're rich doesn't mean you're a sociopath. Okay, so it's like, and. And they fought alongside all the other houses to defend them against the the, the Death Eaters. They made it I mean, in the movies. They, they just cut it dry. Yeah, they, they did. And yes, they did. They I were mean, very it's, upset. It's, they, it's been a while since I read the books. I don't remember. Hearing they, like, did. They, like they, no they did. They 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 did. They fought. The only character, you know, saying bring it. No, they did. Most, most of the um, Southern kids was like, yeah, this sucks, and we don't want you here. Not ever, not every Southern. No, because some of them had Death Eater parents. So yeah, we get that. Yeah, not, not all of them were. So that's not all. Of them. Uh, at this point, you just have to get another mic and just have your wife on. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to join the podcast once in a while? No, she on. No, you're missing part of your damn brain, so I'm trying to help you out right now. Ooh, wow. Okay. Got it. I love. Got to enjoy. Tell her to go through the damn writing right. photos. Yeah, we really need to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, gallivanting all day. Okay. So, um, it's my turn, my turn, yeah. Yes, it's your okay. turn. You see how awkward it is for someone to not say something? When it's their, I'm talking when about. It's, you know what he's so, you know what talking about. So, <laughs> Star Wars Jedi Survivor confirms to have uh, fast travel as well as rideable mounts. And... You know, backtracking was a, a huge complaint in the last game. I didn't have a problem with it. I did. I was like, man, I'm tired of this. I had, I had a big problem with it. Yeah, and with that, they announced that the game will now be pushed back to, what was it again? April? April 20-something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't find it. I guess we didn't save it in the notes, but I think I posted it on our Instagram. Let me go to that real quick. So, you know, we don't sit here rambling like some lunatics. Okay. Oh, it doesn't hurry up and load. Here we go. Got it right here. So, yeah, April 28th. So, yeah, they said uh, the delay is attributed to the team hitting the respawn quality bar and achieving the level to polish, um, the level of polish that fans deserve. Yeah. 
So they added six crucial weeks to the release of the schedule. So, I mean, I didn't pre-order it yet because, once again, almost was very tempted to get that limited runs collector's edition. But the way they screwed me over with this, I probably won't play that until 2025. If you know better, do better, right? Jeez, you gonna have to let us go, man. It, it, let it. Yeah, I'm gonna email them, and when I get my two hundred dollars, then I will let it go. Don't pre-order anything from Limit Run Games unless you want to wait until you're 80 years old to play it in the system you got it for is obsolete. I remember when I bought this. But it's a collector's item, Samir. It else, it's also a game. I want to right, play the game. It's a collector's it, it's item to the point where I went and bought the game on the PS5. So yes. It, once again, they should be ready. Everything should have been done. You can't announce stuff without stuff being done. You can do that with video games. Why? Because you're still building the game. That's pretty much software. The shredder figure should have been done. Um, the little shadow boxes with the arcade that plays the, um, the intro video should have been done. Stickers, who knows how long that takes. Maybe like 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure that's done. Finish my damn soundtrack because they sold out of the soundtrack. Everything is sold out. So even if I wanted to get like another edition on a system, guess what? I can't because it's sold out. So I don't even know if people who got the basic edition got theirs. So I'm just like, like I said, I'm over it. Limited run game sucks. Rank over. All right. So we do have to unfortunately give a rest in peace to Ann Wershing. Um, some people know her from Star Trek Picard and um, Timeless, but she was also Tess. She was the original motion uh, mocap and voice actress of Tess when Last of Us first came out in 2013. She was also on The Rookie. Um, she passed away at the age of 45 from cancer. So, yeah. Um, fuck cancer. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, she was just on. She was just in the. I want to say it was the season premiere, this season of the rookie, because she played a. Um, she was a serial killer named Rosalind Rosalind Dyer. And um, yeah, her um, her character just coincidentally got killed off. But yeah, condolences to her family. Didn't mean to break down the podcast, but you know, we have to talk about these things and also we have to give a rest in peace to lisa loring who was the original wednesday adams on the television series. oh yeah way at the age of 64 um apparently she suffered from a massive stroke and she was taken off of life support so yeah so rest in peace to those two actresses so um samir all right, so I the hang on, let me, let me grab it, let me grab it, let me grab it, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Really? You no, know, I had the story. I just needed to um, grab the thing. Okay, so yeah, um, Blumhouse uh, Five Nights at Freddy begun, uh, has begun filming. Never been a fan. And of uh, I, I totally forgot. Not, not have I, and I totally forgot about that. The that they were making a um a uh, live action, but there it is. That's a that's a thing. Uh, that, that was just one thing I was going to talk about. The next thing was um, uh, Square Enix announces declining financial results um, uh, for quarter one so far, and uh, planning multiple new games, including new IP. So I'm like Square Enix. Okay, what so, are you doing, guys? So, so, so here's the question. I mean, they lost. They, they're reporting losses from the first quarter of this year. When we're, on, when we're only two months in, they haven't released anything new. They just killed off Avengers. Didn't you say Outriders was already dead? Yep. So all, all the only quote unquote cash grab they have is Final Fantasy Online, right? Well, that's that's a consistent money maker, but that's not that's not the issue. So here's the issue we have here. So based on the um, revenue from 2021 2022. Uh, they're they're about what's that twenty percent down? That's a, it's a significant amount down. I, I'm not gonna read all these numbers. I'm not, I'm not a Wall Street guy. The point is they down and they upset 
And here's the thing, y'all, y'all Quit don't. Crap. Um, well, that, that's not it. That's 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 the only part of it. Y'all dumped that's a, a lot of IPs. Yeah. No, I'm no, no, it's not. Yeah, they, their, their public their their public persona is hurt among the gaming community also because they dumped a lot of IP to work on blockchain stuff and NFTs. You know, it's like, uh, guys, that's kind of that boat is, is kind of sinking right now. Yeah. Like, crypto is still down. I mean, the boat's NLT, not sinking. Everyone hates the boat it. is underneath the water. It's dead with Jack, who, who uh, James Cameron just said, oh, could have survived. But yeah, that, that yeah, he, he, that. he finally admitted it. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. So it's like, I'm like, just, 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 just figure out what y'all trying to do. Take the L, just <laughs> hurry up and finish the other two. Take the L and seven. And, and just fix, just fix yourself. Um, all right, those are my two cents. All right, all right. Uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna try to see if I can rip this audio real quick because it's better to come from his mouth as opposed to us trying to uh, not regurgitate, but you know, say everything that he said, but you know, end up leaving out some stuff. So James Gunn was actually. Well, I think we, no, we didn't. We didn't talk about it because it happened when we weren't recording. But yeah, so James Gunn actually brought up everything that's going on with the DCU. Did I save this video? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I know I'm usually more professional than this. But, you know, sometimes you just got to keep ranting so there's no dead air. Oh. I guess I didn't. Say okay, that. well, I mean, we can talk about Avatar's gross right now, so yeah, we'll give it yeah, up there on that. Yeah, you, yeah, you can uh, <laughs> go ahead and talk about Avatar. Yeah, man, I got re- I got something we could talk about here. Here's some Avatar <laughs> stuff, homie. <laughs> oh, let's see what I'm trying to see where it's at in the. Uh, I think well, it has. It a just, movie. it just, no, it got knocked off. It's knock at the cabin. No, it's not, yeah, it knocked it off the, the, the number one spot, which it held it for a long time, but um. Let me see where it's at in the um the highest grossing um uh, films period currently. Let's see where we at. So it's still number four. And to get to number three and beat out Titanic, it needs another seventy four million dollars. Really? So that's how much mu- yeah. Seventy four million. Yeah, it needs that. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna hit that, but honestly, my guy it, he ha- oh my Dude, he's he's three times in the, in the top top five, three threes. What kind of madman is he? We know what kind of madman he is. He's guy who just shits on everything else. I mean, when you put up numbers like that, just saying. Okay, but there's a difference. You know, there's this thing called humility, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, and a lot of a lot, I mean, a lot of great people don't have it though. Once it's again, like a you, lot you of see Michael, you, you see Michael Jordan have humility? Hell yes. no. Yes, he did. You didn't. No, he did. Yes, he did. So he, you know, he owns a team, right? Like, I heard recently, all right, on TikTok, um, that apparently his team wasn't performing uh, well, and he got on the court and owned them all. This is somehow was done. Like, I'm not sure what year this happened. Probably wasn't recent, but still, no, this is this is like like right after he retired. Yeah, this was when he bought the uh, when he became like a partial owner of the Washington Witches. I know what you're talking about. You know why yeah. I swear? Because I watched that almost 20 years ago. And I so then that's it. still that, that, that's still that's still goat that's still goat stat. That, that's goat behavior right there. No, that's goat right. behavior, and that's also owner behavior. It's like, bro, now you costing me money, so I'm okay. going to have to show y'all how it's done. And it's not like he was just like, you're messing up. No, he he showed like a couple of new kids how to okay. Know, so I'm then, if, if, if James Cameron says your, your your CGI is trash, comes out with one of the best CGI, is the best CGI movie ever, and then proceeds to make a profit off of an insane budget. This budget was stupid. This budget was a t- this budget was a crapshoot. He's like, yeah, man, this movie ain't gonna make no money, and it make money. It's like, yo, <laughs> he pulled a Rick James. No, like, no, that's <laughs> not what he did. No, he said, oh, no, y'all going to watch it again because you have to get up and pee. And guess what? Then you're going to come back and watch it again. I, for, I forgot that's about narcissist. that. Yeah, you forgot about that. Yo, I forgot. That's funny because it's like, yo, y'all going to watch it again. Don't worry about it. Y'all can go to the bathroom. I'll watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> you find that clip? Yeah, I got to keep talking about this movie. It's dope. Yeah, I got it. So, yeah, okay, James good. Gunn actually, um, he gave a presentation to, you know, the um, – stockholders of dc and he you know posted a six minute video about what's coming down the slate of dc so here it is 
Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of you know our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds, outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, I'm in. and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next project up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is gonna team up with members of Team Peacemaker, and this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan, and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there, but this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct Earth. In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they wanna fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes we're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is the story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The brave and the bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, where Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. 
And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're gonna talk about, a very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I wanna be true to those stories. I wanna be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. Okay, so which one do you wanna talk about first? Man, okay, so here's the thing. Thank God. See, I, I knew he would have a lot of good ideas for the most part. And first thing, first off, off rip, bam, we get in the Batman family. I am tired of seeing Batman's origin. I am tired of seeing Lone Dark Knights, okay? I, look, spoiler alert, I don't think he's the most exciting person in the Batman family. I'm actually more of a Robin Nightwing and Batgirl fan, all right? And then followed up by Batman, okay? He's fun and all, but come on. It's, it's like, I'm just saying. I'm the tiredest long stretch of time we've had without having a boy wonder on screen. Okay. And people, and, and you know, it, it's like, and it started with freaking Nolan. It's like they couldn't make a, a realistic Batman and have a, a sidekick apparently. I don't know. Like it wasn't cool enough or something or not gritty enough. Listen, if you can't take, if you can't take a, 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 a orphaned acrobat out for revenge and, and, and trying to prove himself and make him cool, that's on you. That's not Robin's fault. That's you. Okay. Hey, what was Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character's name again? After that, shut up. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. God dang it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually sent you a uh, a table that I found. Um, it's in the chat. So if you want to look at that, that way we kind of just keep track of everything. So I'm excited for uh, Batman the Brave and the Bold as well. My issue is the title and that we're starting off with Damien. So once again, I have no problem with Damien. I don't either. It, it, I just it, wish we would have started with Dick Grayson in the Brave and the Bold. That's 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 literally their their team up book. So okay, if they can reference that he is not the first Robin and he's the fifth, yes. then it's fine. I'm yeah, they can the reference fifth, it, then I'm that's fine. Definitely. Honestly, I'm okay with them referencing and going back and saying, "Oh yeah, this is Dick. He's back. He's not Nightwing." I'm okay with that. At this point, do it. Just just rush headlong in. And just, just just balls to the wall. Yeah, because um, from if you, if you well if you guys watch the video that I'm obviously going to insert because we just got the audio because we can't watch video while we're recording. Um, he references Grant or I almost say Grant Morrison's Grant Morrison's Batman and Son as the inspiration behind that. And so if you read that book, Damien interacts with Tim and kicks his ass. Okay, he didn't do that. He sucker punched Tim. First off, okay, I remember that he sucker punched him. I'm not saying Damien ain't skilled, but he sucker punched the shit out of Tim. You know he did. It's been a while, and the funny thing is, I have that. I wonder if it's worth some money now. My <laughs> God, I can I can pull that up right now. It, 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 he, he sucker punched him, All and right. then and then Tim fell like 20 feet down, crashed through some displays, and was out. I'm like, yo, and he was trying to be his friend. All right, he had his guard down. He was trying to talk to the little kid. And the demon come out with a, I think he had some knuckle dusters on too. Like he straight clocked him with some brass knuckles. It was dirty. <laughs> okay, don't put that on Tim. Damien, he didn't see that Damien coming. Said, Damien said, "The more you fuck around, the more you're gonna find out." But um, Tim wasn't even effing around. He wasn't effing around. That's the messed up part about that. Bruce was so mad about that. But um, yeah. So the reason why I bring that up is because pretty much everything that he announced sold out on Amazon. So like Warren Ellis's run, Warren Ellis's, Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch's authority is sold out. All Star Superman sold out. Uh, the Grant Morrison Batman Omnibus is sold out. Uh, Batman and Robin, where Dick is Batman, sold out. Um, some old Alan Moore Swamp things sold out. So it's like, bro, when I went to Past, Present, Future today, 
They had All Star Superman for like ninety bucks. Hmm. I'm like, if y'all don't get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm excited. Hey, uh, what? No, okay, this is off topic, so I'm not going to say anything. I want you done. Okay, so uh, Waller, I'm looking forward to because, you know, that is supposed to take place in between seasons one and two of Peacemaker. So I don't know, like, what the turnaround thing is going to be around for that. Or is this going to be like a. Um, I'm not that excited. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not sure how exciting they can make that. I don't know. Bro, Amanda Waller got hands. Like, I, I no, know she does. It's, been a, it's, it's just, been a while since you read comics. Like, I don't know if you read. Like when I've like, seen oh, her, I seen her kill people. It, I get no, it. I'm talking she, about when there was like a full blown breakout at Bell at Bell Reeve, and like the prisoners, like one of them went after her daughter. She you don't remember? Out. You don't remember? Uh, they she, they when the, in the New Fifty Two when they debuted the new Amanda Waller, she was a black she was a black ops operative lady yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, she, was she did a bunch of, I can't remember what. Yeah, so she. Was. You think all that training goes away? No, it doesn't go away. Yeah, I just really wish. They should have kept skinny Amanda Waller in the comics. They're like, nah, she got to be plump again. I mean, they made her thin, and then they, and they blew her up again. They no, blew her up, then blew her up again. I don't know. No, no. Look, a, a larger women can larger women can have hands too. I never said that they couldn't, but cardio. That's all I'm saying. I mean, large people can do cardio too. Yeah, but they can't be rolling and ducking and all that stuff. Like I went out, I, I've seen people, you know, plus size out on the paintball field, just out of breath, and I gotta t- and I gotta cover them. I'm not naming any names, so. <laughs> okay. Just don't worry. There's nobody. You know, I don't. I don't know if he listens to the podcast either, but I'm not. I'm not saying no names. All right. Um, like we said, Superman Legacy is going to be heavily inspired by All Star Superman. See, here's the thing. But also, Superman, didn't he die at the end of that? Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> I didn't like All-Star Superman, and it wasn't just because of Frank Quatley's artwork. It was just, I just felt like it was so mundane. There's so many Superman stories that you can, like, take from and borrow. Bruh, Superman Earth 1 is right there. That is possibly one of the best Superman stories within the past, like, 15 to 20 years. Written by J. Michael Shazinski and drawn by Shane Davis did the first two volumes and Adrian Sayef, uh did the last volume. So three volumes. That's a recommendation I, w- I would recommend. I mean, yeah, we're kind of getting sick and tired of retelling Superman's story as well. So I can see why he went with All-Star Superman. But even then, you could have just like pulled any arc. Okay, I saw. I only read. I only watched the movie, the animated movie. How much of that was accurate to the to the um, volume, the paper, uh, the trade? It was like what eight years in between the comic and the in the movie. I don't remember. I try not to remember that movie because they made it look so much like Frank Quitely's artwork, and you know how I feel about Frank Quitely. It was. It, I thought the movie Paramore was really like good. looks like they got cancer. I thought the movie was really good. So you don't remember how accurate the movie was to the comic. I know there's some things in there that were more or less accurate, like the ending and like Lois. So, Lewis so it Lewis. is the same way. It's, it, it is the same way. Yeah, but here's the issue. Here's the issue when you when you do a a book, uh, an animated movie that's based off of twelve issues. It's the same thing like the issue with everybody had with Injustice. You're trying too hard to tell a whole story. You could have did two movies of that. Like, bro, um, what was it? The Long Halloween. That could have been one movie. You know why? Because it's only six issues. Mm, yeah, that was good, though. It, it was good, but I'm just... that That's something that could have just been one movie as opposed to, you know, Injustice. That is literally a, like, six-year comic that takes place over the span of five years. So it's like... Kind of dropped the ball with that one. So like that could have been that could have been a series. They could put a stress that for two seasons. Yeah, actually. that could have been a series. Like that's what I'm saying with All Star Superman. Too short. That's why I'm glad. Right, they did but the that, that's what. I'm, but that's what I'm saying though. It's like the if the end of this comic is the same. It end this, uh, the the movie, the animated movie, and the comic are the same. And they're calling it um, Superman Legacy, and he's drawing inspiration from it. How much inspiration is he drawing? I don't know. It's probably just like the stuff that was happening in between him dying. So like 
I don't know, spending more time with Lois and things like that and doing the small things. So, you know, I, don't, I doubt that James Gunn is going to say, oh, you know, it's time to kill Superman. <laughs> All right. Um, Lanterns. We already knew about Lanterns and, like, the shakeups that's been going on with that. He said it was more like a true, true detective story. So police procedural, if you will. I don't think Samir's going to watch that. I mean, Space well, Cops. I don't know Police procedural. But I don't, I, mind, I, I, I don't, I just, I don't mind police procedural. The issue is it's the mundane part of the police procedural that I don't like. So if you add in police procedural plus space stuff, that's I'm what on I was board. about to say, but you cut me off. I was going to say, but then again, space stuff. So you might watch it. Um, I th- I can't. We talked about it a while ago. We found out some cast news a while back. Uh, Creature Commandos. I know nothing of the Creature Commandos. Uh, let me even see who's on this team. All right. Creature Commandos. So this is actually set like uh, it's a team of military superheroes originally set in World War II. Mm-hmm. I think they re- yeah, they redid this for the um, New 52. It was uh, yeah, they were updated in uh, Frankenstein and Age in the Shade. So, oh, yeah. I remember Frankenstein and Age in the Shade. Yeah. So the original team was Warren Griffith, who was uh, a person who could turn into a werewolf. Uh, Jake, who was a uh, GI robot. Uh, then there's Jake, too. And then there's Dr. Mira Rhodes, who's also known as Doc, uh, Dr. Medusa, who's obviously a Medusa. Lieutenant Matthew Shreve. Uh, he is the only human character on the team. Lieutenant Lucky uh, Taylor, who eventually becomes Frankenstein. And Sergeant Vincent Velcro. Uh, he's a vampire. They ain't forgetting somebody. Didn't um, what's that? No, was it? No, uh, I was talking about that's the original team from the book in the eighties. So the oh. agent of the uh, Shade team was Father Time, Ray Palmer, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, uh, Doctor Nina Missouri, um, who was basically like a a, a gill slash mermaid hybrid. Uh, Vincent. Uh, Velcro, who was a vampire, Warren Griffith was the werewolf, Khalees was the mummy, and um, like I said, Matthew Shreve, um, who was uh, who's the only human on the team. So, this is animated. I mean... Oh, yeah, okay. I do recall it. Dude, they had a lot of good ideas in this book. Yeah, but nobody I- bought it. Like, yeah, I know, but I'm like, they, they, I'm like, I can always do, I can always down with ladies with extra harms. Of course, why am I not surprised? So, Paradise Lost, he said it was basically Wonder Woman meets Game of Thrones. I mean, I don't get that correlation because uh, Themyscira is pretty isolated. They don't also Themyscira is a the, uh, is a monarchy queendom, and it's like they kind of just they they pay fealty to whoever's in charge. There's no there's no moving around historically honestly they could obviously change that but there's no there's no subterfuge there's no moving pieces behind the boards how are you gonna call Game of Thrones about the entry the court entry there's no court intrigue among the Amazons they pay fealty to the queen whoever's queen is queen you know yeah. so it's like oh let me move this around so I can be queen next that's not how they work usually yeah. you know unless they change that they could change it but I'm just saying that's historically how they work. It's like, yo, Hippolyta had a daughter named Diana, and then Diana stepped in, stepped out. You know, Hippolyta me came back from the dead. Right now, we got Nubia. You know, ain't, ain't nobody challenging Nubia, you know? Yeah. Cause I think I think Hippolyta's dead now. Yeah, she's she dead. And then yeah. Diana obviously stepped down, and Nubia came in, and, and yeah, she's running things, which is, okay, good. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I'm actually going to try to read um, Trial of the Amazons, because like I said, I'm behind on comics, like literally on my iPad. I have... 638 comics to read. That's including single issues and trades. Um, I was like, yeah, that's like two years old. I'm over it. I'll just probably get a rundown on YouTube or something. So Supergirl, Woman of oh, Tomorrow. Yeah. This was actually written by uh, Tom King, and the art was done by Bill Ooh, Lewis. Really? Oh, you mean the movie or the comic? The comic. I said the comic. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, Tom King? He's going to write the movie? <laughs> yeah, be excited for a second. Um... I didn't read this because I wasn't a fan of the artwork. I'm actually going to pull it up right now so you guys can the see. The covers look fire. The covers look uh, fire. I think she did, uh, Bilquis also did the covers, but it's probably like a different colorist or something. All right. Hold on a second. 
yeah, Bilquis did the covers. So I'm trying to find a page with Supergirl on it or something. Yeah, so Bilquis uh, did the covers. Oh, so the, I don't know, maybe she just put more details into the covers. All right. Hold on. I know I got a glare. Try me. Oh boy! Yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm turning off my light for a second. Shut up! It's worse. It's yeah, worse. I know it's worse. I'm just gonna um. Uh, I just post a screenshot. Or <laughs> yeah, just post a screenshot, yeah. man. Bro, I'm just trying to avoid doing a bunch of stuff in uh, posts. It's just a lot of work. Let's so. let's give a, let's let's all give it up for Bernard. He works hard and and you know he does a lot. Let's give, give give it up for Bernard. Oh, you want me to add sound effects right now? I don't know. I was just saying, I was giving you props. <laughs> All right, so... Um, He's on his grind. So, another one, The Authority. Boy, if y'all hate episode three of The Last of Us, y'all definitely gonna hate The Authority. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I mean, okay, first off, I'm excited for The Authority because, you know, I love my, I love me some gay stuff. So, I'm, I'm excited for it. Damn, but also, we don't, know how, we don't know how... It's probably not gonna be that gay. I mean, we have uh, we have uh, Midnighter and uh, Apollo, but how much of their relationship is going to be on the forefront? They're always making out. In some ways, some somehow they're always making out. Like I just read an I uh, just read a book because you know they're actually in the DCU now. The Wildstorm universe is like what's that? Um, and they were. Don't get me started Superman. about Gen Thirteen. Oh, a lot they did them dirty. No, no, well they 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 who? So um, yeah, so. Superman made his own team of the of the authority. So it was Manchester Black, Midnighter, Apollo, um, Natasha Irons, someone else I can't think of, and someone else I can't think of. But bro, like they got tortured on War World by Mongol, and like Apollo was being mind controlled, and Midnighter obviously was doing Midnighter stuff, so basically fucking everything up. And basically, like in the middle of the battle, they just started making out. It's like really. I mean, yeah, I mean, people people dying left and right. So, like I said, they always gonna find some way to get. Oh, I'm, exci- I'm, ex- I'm excited. All right. So, one that's very near and dear to my heart. I've hyped this man up for years. Uh, it's been a long time coming. He was supposed to have a show on Sci-Fi, but then it died. Thank God that I, I, he didn't need to be on Sci-Fi. He needed to be on the app. With the other DC stuff, well, it could have went to the CW, but no, like, it needs to be on the app. It, he he too good, he too good for CBW. All right, I'm, I'm talking about yeah. before there was an HBO Max. This was this was a thing when Smallville was still on the air. Ugh, it would have been worse because Booster Gold showed up on Smallville, and there was such a demand after that that they were like, okay, well, give him a show on Sci-Fi. <laughs> Didn't happen. We got Krypton instead. Booster Gold, Ugh. the greatest hero you've never heard of. And the funny thing is, some idiot decided to write, I've never heard of this guy <laughs> on Facebook. So I was like, yeah, he's the greatest hero you never heard of. And people roasted him in the comments. They're like, did you not watch Justice League Unlimited growing up? He was like, no. They're like, boo this man. <laughs> yeah, for real. Boo that man. So, I, I wasn't even there. Yeah. So Booster Gold is actually one of my favorite heroes. He goes by the name of Michael John Carter. He is actually from the 31st century. He is a washed yeah. up football player who got kicked off his team for betting on his own games and ends up... Oh, yeah, you can't do that. That's bad. (laughs) Yes. That's basically insider trading for sports. So so he ends up becoming a janitor at a uh, museum. And there's a robot who goes by the name of Skeets, who is like the security guard for the museum. He ends up uh, reprogramming this robot, Skeets, to become his assistant. He steals a Legion flight ring, a force field, some other trinkets because this is a museum of superheroes in a time machine. I got to say, they did, not put no, they did not put no security in that stuff. A Legion flight ring is no joke to be leaning around. <laughs> Those flight <laughs> rings do so much. No, it's literally flight. That's it. That's all the Legion. Nah, they, don't they have a They're limited... Protect- communicators. No. Don't they have limited protective field on them? No. His belt's the force field. Ah, uh, okay. Still. And, and comes back to the 20th century. For, for fame and clout and all that stuff. So I cannot wait to see this because Booster Gold, like, he is, like, in my top ten of heroes without powers. 
like you know, like a metahuman or a mutant or anything like that. So yeah, he has powers, but it's all tech based. Did not like how Tom King wrote him in Batman, though it made him a basic idiot. But his I mean, he's not an idiot. He's just no, yeah. Tom King kind of wrote him like a no, like like he ain't know what was going on. Like Booster Gold is a Time Master, so he's like the Time Masters are more or less like like Doctor Who. They know when something happens, when something goes wrong with time. So like there's an arc like towards the end of Tom King's run of Batman where. Something happens with time. I can't remember the full specific, but Booster Gold knows nothing. He's like, yeah, I think something's wrong, but I don't know. He was, he was kind of like Chicken Little. What are we talking about? I'm like, Tom, I was with you. I had no issues with the whole Bruce and Selena thing. Samir, don't get started. But I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I, would, okay, I don't think that was even Tom King's fault. I literally yeah, think they, 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 didn't, issue. they didn't let him do what he's going to do. Yeah. And they, they, they walked it back. Now, I'm not going to put it on Tom King. FBC editorial though. After yeah. them, I ain't reading Batman until he gets his life well, straight. Well, but most of those people are gone now, and Bruce's life is never going to go straight. He's going the route of Spider Man. Joker took all his money. He's no longer a billionaire. He no longer Great. owns Wayne Manor. He has no access to the Batcave. He has no what? access to Wayne Enterprises. Okay, he's living like downtown in like a bachelor flat. He's got to hopefully rely on all his mini caves and stuff like that. He has to go back and retrieve batarangs. I I give it. A year, maybe a year and a half before he's Samir. rich again. Samir, mm-hmm. that was a year and a half ago. All right, it's gonna happen. How long? <laughs> how long we had? How long we had Otto um, as Superior Spider Man? Year and a half. Okay, I give it. I give, give it a year. Give it two years. It's gonna happen. You gonna be back? Okay, they're I gonna mean, relaunch the book. I mean, because bro, we had Rick Grayson for like almost a year. No, we yeah, didn't. I know. We had Rick Grayson for a year. For those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, oh, that was stupid. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> Nightwing got shot in the head. And he pretty much forgot who he was. And, you know, they tried to slowly walk him back into it. It's like, oh, you know, your parents died and, you know, we adopt, uh, Bruce adopted you. And so, yeah, you're, you know, he raised you. He ain't remember Alfred, none of that. Shaved his head and became a, ta- a taxi cab driver and changed his name to Rick. I mean, I liked it because it actually gave other, you know, people a spotlight. So, like, um, it was a firefighter found this Nightwing stash. So it was it was two firefighters, two cops, and I want to say like a police captain. They basically they went around as the Nightwing. So they all had one of his Nightwing suits. Like the one black guy had the black and red one. Uh, the uh, that doesn't sound okay. I, I didn't read the book, but that doesn't sound that interesting. Well, it was basically them. They they had Nightwing stuff without his skills. So, like the only one who actually like had any like type of gymnast skills was the sister, and she had like the eighties suit. Uh, not not the Titans eighties one with like the with the chainmail or anything like that. It was like the uh, the black one with the blue fingertips. So his the middle and the uh, I mean the yeah the the middle and the ring fingers with the blue that goes all the way around with the bird. And her brother had the 80s one with the chain mail where you had the ponytail and whatnot. But but anyway, back back to uh, <laughs> the DCU. So, like he said, uh, Elseworlds consists of Joker, the Batman, uh, this chart it also has Teen Titans Go on there and Superman and Lois. Hopefully Superman and Lois sticks around. I cannot wait. For- they got rid of Titans. They got rid of Doom Patrol. Pennyworth took a bit of dust. They yeah, cleaning house. Like They're cleaning house. Get rid of all these dumb shows. Superman and Lois is good, man. And, oh, that's, yeah. and honestly, that's... Here, kinda... Here's where I'm at. Here's, here's where I'm at. Okay, listen. I'm glad he named it Elseworld because if it ain't a part of the main continuity, in my opinion, it don't need to be there. Okay? That's just it. I, like, I don't know. Color me a purist, but if it ain't, if it ain't pushing a narrative for it, why is it there? Why I gotta watch it? You know, I mean, Superman and Lois is pushing the narrative, and that's the, honestly what I would. Yeah, but the Valanti verse is dead. It's the only show left. Like, is Melissa Bologna gonna come back? Huh? Is Grant Gustin gonna come back and, and, and hang on the show? It's like all it's the characters. Earth. <sighs> yeah, they had to pull him out of the Earth, huh? They pulled the Miles Morales. I don't know why they did that. That was so stupid. They pulled the Miles Morales. Basically, they had to save him. They had to save that one show out of that universe. No, that's what happened. Well, they kind of alluded to it in Crisis because they said that. Lois had two, uh, him and Lois had two kids. Because remember, at the beginning of Crisis, she was pregnant. They were expecting one kid. So if you watch towards the end of Crisis, she was like, your, your kids are waiting for you. He's like, kids? So 
like, and they finally acknowledged it because that was my main grievance with sit with season one. It was like, yo, so Supergirl's not going to show up or none of that. And then, you know, there's a speech that uh, Sam Lane is giving. He's like, your father's the strongest person on this world. I'm like, wait, on this world? So, fuck the Flash, Supergirl, Black Lightning, the Legends. So, yeah, the, uh, the showrunner finally confirmed that, you know, it's on an alternate earth. Lame and a cop out. Yeah, but that's kind of what I was... Ex- that's kind of what I want from a Superman movie because it's like at this point, are we ever going to see Clark Kent grow and become a father like the way he is in the comics now, the way he is on Superman and Lords? Like, bro, Superman and Lords actually has some of the best fighting as far as Clark Kent goes. Like, like um, Jordan is the one with powers. Like, there's a scene. Is Lois season- playing how one kid misses the the Kryptonian gene? Is Lois stepping out? Is she living foul? No, they're twins. That don't make no sense. So he's not half Kryptonian? He is half Kryptonian, but he's just not showing any display of powers. Maybe in season three? Don't know. But or he's... I don't know. It just, it just seems whack that they're going to just find a way not to give him powers when... It, it, I mean, how do they explain Kryptonians in that in that um that show? Like, Do they get powers under the effect of yellow sunlight? Yes. So full stop, he should have powers. Oh, he could also be a late blink, uh, late bloomer like Fred on the Velma. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't work on the show. I just enjoy the show. But this is the point I was trying to make. Bro, there's a there's a scene where Jordan is, uh, where Clark is trying to teach Jordan how to fly. So he takes him out to the Arctic. And Clark automatically realizes that he failed as a father. He's like, yeah, I used to do this as a kid. And I named it the Kelsey Run. And Jordan says, what's that? And Clark just looks and just You sure I don't need a coat? This hat's all I could find in the truck. You'll be fine once we get started. Started doing what? Training. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, uh, what do we do first? I spent years out here on this very ice, perfecting how to fly. Now it's your turn. I know you've seen me calling what I do flying, being generous. You can do it. I don't know. That's a long way down. You just have to let go of your fear, Jordan. I mean, you'll catch me before I crash, right? You got this. We're gonna do one of my favorite flight paths. All right, I used to call it the castle run. Uh, uh, what's that? What's his head? Down. It's like, bro, you didn't show your son Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars in the universe. <laughs> he named it the castle run. So, yeah. yeah. But I am very excited for a good majority of the stuff. I'm mainly excited about Booster Go because that's my boy. Yeah, like, um, I met Dan Jurgens like a few years ago. I geeked out. I, I geeked out. I'm like, bro, you, you made one of the be- the greatest heroes we never heard of. And like, I like, you know how like people used to gush over Michael Jackson? Yeah. 
that's how I get sometimes with certain comic book writers and artists like that. Like I did that the first time I met Dagley, kind of the first time I met Dan. Well, dude, I mean, I get you because that's like that's why I want to go to Dragon Con this year because I have to meet Patricia Briggs. She's been writing my favorite novel. I've been reading this novel for damn near fifteen years. Hang on, no, I started in '08. So how many years is that? Thirteen. Thirteen. So I've been reading this lady's books for thirteen years. I'm caught up. I want to. I want to bring all my copies. I'm and sorry, have you're right. It was fifteen. Yeah. So, anyways, I so I get you, and I I, and I will forever regret not going to MegaCon the year that the cast of Steven Universe was there. I will always. The whole cast Estelle was there. Estelle, what was I thinking? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna die regret. It's like, do you ever have me? I should have went to Orlando that year. Yeah, I <laughs> kind of had that same situation. You remember. 2016 was not a very good year for me. My whole situation with, you know, the dead guy and the girl, because we were, me and him, and... I recall, that, that was that was a lot to, yes. That, no, that was the last year Stan Lee was at Megacon. Oh, yeah, I yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited about everything coming down the pipeline with DC, um, with the DC Universe, and... I'm glad they're kind of going the Star Wars route. Like, if you voice the character or if you play the character in a different type of medium, you're not going to be transitioned over. And so, like, if you're on... I mean, I'm I'm less of a stickler stickler about that, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, whatever. It's cool. I get it, because, like, Warner Brothers actually wanted to do that with Tom Welling. They wanted him for Superman Returns, but they were like, it makes no sense because... When Superman Returns was coming out, production started. Superman Returns came out in what, 05, I want to say? So that was around season four of Smallville. Clark Kent would have been 14. Mm. It's like, you got this six foot, 20 something year old playing a 14 year old. And now, I mean, he was grown. Like, season one of Smallville, he had a bit of a baby face. He was still a grown ass dude. How, what year, what, what, what school, were they juniors or, or sophomores? Freshmen. Um, excuse me? <laughs> Clark, Kent, Clark Kent aged in real time like us. So when 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 season one of Smallville came out, we were freshmen in high school. Oh, we were freshmen! That was that's I've, egregious. I've never seen that a was that boy freshman. was not fourteen. Oh my god! <laughs> I've never seen a six foot freshman. What what year? What how old was Tom Welling when he was playing a fourteen year old? I would say fifteen year old. I think they said he was fifteen. Uh, was he like twenty five? No, I think he was like twenty two. Hold on a second. Hold on, I'm doing the math. No, I don't want how old he is now. I know he's forty five now. Twenty two, twenty three. I mean, that's not the worst I've seen. Because uh, how was uh, AJ Apka? How old was he when he started? Uh, you mean KJ Apka? Yeah, KJ Apka. How old was he when he started in Riverdale? KJ Apka. We both fucked up. Um, bro, he's only 25 now. <laughs> so, okay, so okay, so he was probably like 19. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not that that bad. Okay. Um, but I'm sorry. Tom Welling... <laughs> Uh, it was the, the height. That, it's the height that that people that, you know, to put it in perspective. My six foot three behind was five five when I was fourteen. I was a late bloomer, but come on now. I, some people grow fast, but that's 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 a little ridiculous. Yeah, Tom six foot three. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure when he was my, I'm pretty sure he was around my uh, when he was uh, fourteen, he was around my height at that age. Maybe he was like five six, five seven. But yeah, no. Nah. I Google him in high school, see how uh, short he was. Yeah, I just tried to um, see how tall he was in high school, but I can't find anything. Because right. right, I mean, he he was a model when he was fifteen, so he might have been like maybe five ten, five eleven. I can believe know. that he has a very nice jawline. He's chiseled, yeah, very very symmetrical yeah. face. Yeah, but uh, what you got, man? Because we've been, we've been talking about DC for a good minute. Oh, okay. So let me go back over here because I, I zoned out. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, da, 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 da. okay. The so uh, Amazon. Um, hang on. I gotta pull the page up. 
okay, Amazon is uh, is making a Tomb Raider movie and, and series to go with this game. So Crystal Dynamics and uh, uh, was bought out by Amazon recently, and they're gonna uh, basically, I guess, start a new um, a, a continuation of the of the uh, recent uh, Tomb Raider games, which is great because I love those games. And they're Amazon apparently is going to make a TV show and movie to go along with those uh, games. Okay, cool. That's, I mean, and that's uh, good. Phoebe, okay, uh, apparently Phoebe Waller Bridge is attached as a writer and executive producer. Yes, and possibly starring. I yeah, saw that. I'm like, I don't know who. The hell I mean, Waller she Bridge is. okay. Really, you don't? Okay, so Google her. You've seen her face, but also she uh, she starred in Fleabag. Uh, she was a showrunner. She was a showrunner for the first series of Killing Eve, which was fire. Um, and she was also a writer on a, a writer on the last James Bond movie, No Time to Die. That lady been putting in work. All right, she is very talented. To complicate things, Netflix also has a Tomb Raider series in the work. Really? Yes. That is that is a lot. Of stuff. I forgot. But I think we did talk about that. I totally yeah, forgot we about did. that. Yeah, I didn't see anything that she was in. Oh, apparently she was in Broadchurch. So that was what, 2015? So I saw her in, in Broadchurch. She's in Indiana Jones and the um, Dial of Destiny. Yeah. Look, I'm just excited that um, Amazon is publishing the, uh, the, the Tomb Raider series going forward. I mean... Yeah, but are they gonna like outsource the games? Because no, games okay, this like Crystal Dynamics had uh had uh, basically they got acquired by they got okay, acquired so by, um, by they, they, yeah yeah they gonna do, and then they basically Amazon just gave them the property and just and sat back. Okay, as long yeah. as Crystal Dynamics is still doing the games, cool. Because we already talked about how Amazon games are kind of trash. Uh, what what have they had so far? I haven't even played any. Yeah, it was like one game that came out when they announced like thirty of them. We talked about it a little while ago. I know the MMO about. they came out with was was pretty garbage. I forgot what it was called though. Yeah, New yeah, World I, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I, don't, I honestly don't feel like going back to try to find what episode that was to to splice the clip in. But yeah, because I don't even think we had video for it, so it'd be kind of pointless. It would just be like a blank spot right here in the video. But yeah, um, yeah so I'm over that. <laughs> Netflix has decided to, I don't know if they're going to back up on this or what, but it kind of got leaked that, you know, they were working on some anti-password sharing stuff. And I feel like we talked about this like maybe a week ago or maybe I talked about, about it with you on the phone or something. I don't remember. But dear Netflix, if I'm paying you $23 a month, that's after tax for four users in 4K, I should be able to share my password with anyone. I want to. Okay? Well, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that would be fair. But and, they don't uh, care. And, and your dumbasses decided to impl- implement this anti-password sharing stuff without deleting a very famous tweet that you posted that said, <laughs> <laughs> uh, "Hold on, where is it?" Because I posted it on our uh, on our Angry Blurs Twitter. Yeah, uh, love, love is and sharing a password. Yeah. <laughs> That did not age well, now did it, Netflix? It did not. So, yeah, they decided to uh, just put the brakes on it in the U.S., but it will still be applicable everywhere, everywhere. So, like, the U.S. and... I mean, so, wait, wait, so we're, we're not getting... We, we can still share our passwords over here for now? Yeah, yeah. Like, I actually just gave Jared my password because he was like, bro... Uh, Thank God, because I've been using my sisters for the past <laughs> eight years, and I ain't stopping no time soon. Thank God. <laughs> Shout out to my big sister Amina. Yeah. Thank you for the, for the password. Yeah. So it said the new rules will require subscribers to verify their home devices every month and devices outside of the home would be blocked and encouraged to create an account of their own. So here's what they actually said. Um, a spokesperson told um, the streamable. It said the streamable is a website. So it said. For a brief time yesterday, a Help Center article containing information that is only applicable to Chile, Costa Rica, and Peru went live in other countries. Yeah. We have since updated it. But yeah. So they're, 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 they, 
they're gonna lose a lot of subscribers. Y'all think y'all lost money last year? So here's the thing, though. Uh, uh, Netflix has actually saw a growth in accounts over the last uh, year, 2022. They actually increased their market share I and know, their and their wow. revenue because we talked about it like tanking last year. Uh, they made money last year. A lot of it, apparently, like. You, you people say, oh, there is nothing on Netflix anymore. I'm gonna cap. I think everyone cap. Everybody cap. I'm calling cap on everybody. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all say I don't cancel. Y'all ain't canceling nothing. Y'all still watching that. It's still in the background when y'all doing something else. All right. Bro, Stop the cap, y'all. Come on. Okay, I'm part of that group. So, like, I really don't watch Netflix that often. And when I do, it's not for background stuff. I literally watch Netflix to watch it. Like, I watched all of that '90s show. 10 episodes. Should have been 12 or something. No. 10. But I'm over Big Mouth. It's like, I watched like the first two episodes of season six. I'm like, yeah, I don't find this funny anymore. Maybe I matured past the puberty humor. <laughs> I mean, where was that like four years ago when Big Mouth started? But who knows? Um, human resources, Stranger Things. It's like, I might honestly get rid of Netflix once Cobra Kai is done. Once Cobra Kai or Stranger Things is done, whichever the latter it is, that's when I'm cutting the cord on it. Because I'm just like, uh, you did on purpose. What? Cutting the cord? No. Cord cutting is when you kill your cable service and go to streaming. Oh. Not the other way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, but no, I'm 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 ending my subscription. So, because once again, I'm paying for 4K. Why is 4K more than regular SD? Everyone else has like programs for you know, ten. I mean, uh, subscriptions for like six bucks, 10 bucks. Hell, Peacock, they're getting rid of their ad free tier and they're letting you get the premium with ads for $5.99. 4K content. Yeah. Disney Plus. Disney Plus alone, $7.99. You get the bundle, what, $18. That's Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, Hulu. There's no tier on the quality of your video, there's no limit on how many users you can have. Yeah, I, uh, I I was watching uh, Wakanda Forever this morning, and uh, yeah, the the sound design, this everything Dolby Atmos surround sound was working, 4K, 4K, IMAX, all that. It's like Netflix. We get it. You guys were first, but guess what? You're about to be last. That's all I'm saying, and I'm kind of sick and tired of it. Like, bro, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Okay, Papa Roach. No. That's a that's a song by Papa Rose. I'm it's sick also, and tired of being sick and tired. It's also a quote by a very famous black woman. So don't you dare give that to Papa Rose. I mean, maybe they maybe they was getting props to that famous black woman. Oh brother, this guy stinks. Uh, hold on one second, I will actually tell you who it is in one second. Uh, Fanny Lou Hammer. I actually said this at a Malcolm X rally on December 20th, 1964. Happy Black History Month. Oh, yeah. Happy Black History Month, y'all. Anger blurs in the house. Nah, you don't get to do that because you literally just shot up Papa Roach. You could have went with the Nappy Root song featuring Anthony Hamilton, Sick and Tired. I don't don't know that song. Well, you need to listen to it. God damn it. (laughs) Um, What you got, man? All right. Let's see. Um... Actually, do you want to get into the? Uh, hang on a second. We got like a couple more epi- uh, stories, and we should get into the review of uh, of um, the last of last of us. Yeah. So yo, this okay, yo, is so, be it. yo, okay. What's up with E three? Is E three dead? <laughs> I said that two years ago. You said uh, he's you, you said cap. dead. Look, that's because okay. Okay, so he, uh, IGN from a very credible because IGN doesn't post nonsense often, right? Ever. So IG has learned from multiple sources that PlayStation, Xbox, and, and Nintendo won't be part of E3 in 2023. What are we supposed to be doing with this conference then? Like, I get that there's, there's a lot of independent developers and there's a lot of standalone yeah, companies. <laughs> but it's like, and e, like for instance, EA could probably still be going. Uh, Bethesda's with Microsoft, so they're not going to go. Um, uh, well, Square Enix is probably going to have something, maybe. Um, uh, I'm like... <laughs> there's so many there's so many publishers that own other like like if EA doesn't show up then there's no Bioware. We don't know what they're doing, you know? Um I'm trying to think of anything else like uh t- like Activision. If Activision don't show up, there's like you know how many games that Activision makes? 
Ubi, Ubisoft. I guess Ubisoft can do a, a yeah. They can show us a new uh, Assassin's Creed, but hey, that's like I'm how they going? The, I'm looking at the. I'm sorry. I got it. I got. I got. I got. Okay. So episode eighty two. Sorry, not sorry. We recorded this on April third, twenty twenty three. EA. I mean, not EA. E three was canceled last year. So yeah, pretty sure EA is dead. <laughs> I mean, E3 is dead. He's already dead. I mean, now it is, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. It's like how you gonna Ellie Goulding dead in the water? <laughs> how you gonna, how you gonna fill a whole week with with like news and stuff from this conference anymore? I don't get it. You're not. You're getting two days, and that's it. <laughs> you, you maybe even not even Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Because everybody's gonna be out drinking on Friday. I mean, it's. It, I'm just like, bro, I tried to tell you last year EA was dead. You're like, no, it's not. It's not going anywhere. EA is, what you might have said, uh, endless. Probably was like, E3 is is endless. But yeah, hopefully we get some news on that Wolverine game, and I hope that it's... Oh, yeah, that's new. Yeah, the Insomniac, but that's owned by PlayStation. Yes. So, it's going to be in the Sony show. Yeah. So <laughs> it's gonna be in a state of play in like three months. But yeah, yeah, probably. Um, Hopefully, it's rated M for mature because, I mean, despite the fact that it's a very horrible film, the X Men Origins Wolverine game is what a Wolverine game should be. That game also, was bloody. It was on the it was on the level of God of God of War. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I see. I actually saw um a, a screen uh, some gameplay of that recently. Okay. What were yeah. you about to say? Because you said also. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the award-winning team of uh, Faith Aaron Hicks and Peter Wartman, sorry, and Adele Matera return with a new tale from the Avatar verse. Avatar, the last airbender, Azula. And Azula in the Spirit Temples arrives this fall. So... This is basically going to be... So basically after the... Um, Another Wait, comic that you aren't gonna buy? What what, what? what are you talking about? What I read all the so Avatar comics. I, I said bye. Up. What? I said huh? bye. Bye bye. Where you going? Where you going? Huh? Bitch, you you living? What? Okay. Huh? My point. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, so give us some more news on this uh, Avatar comic. It's gonna probably wrap up, or at least give us more insight into Azula as a character. After the last, um, I forgot what it was called when they went to go find Zuko's mom. That was that was the last one I, I I remember seeing her in. Maybe I'm tripping on and I go back and read the other content. But yeah, that that was uh, that was it. And then you, now we're gonna see more of her. So I'm excited. She's a, she's always been a, a fan favorite character, and uh, I can't wait to see more of her character to see where she ends up. Okay. Uh, I know nothing of the last Airbender universe. But Samir will tell us all about that comic when it comes out. You know what? We actually need to start doing that. So I'm going to need you to catch up on comics. Oh, okay. So funny story. Oh, oh, speaking of which, finish Dark Web. Oh. I'm getting so tired of Marvel. No, they did Ben Riley dirty. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard. (laughs) Yo, Ben Riley has been getting his ass kicked for like the past like year and a half. Maybe like the past two years. Ben was on a good route when Peter David was writing Ben Riley, The Scarlet Spider. They canceled that book. Okay, they bring Ben back after Peter suffers from intense radiation poisoning. So he's working for a company to get his girlfriend Janine out of jail who possibly caught a body. Don't know that much about Janine. I'm not going back to read the 90s Clone Saga stuff because that stuff went on for like five years. Um, They messed this man up and he blames Peter for it. It's like Peter didn't do it. Peter's trying to tell you that. And it's just... uh, like, Madeline Pryor got everything that she wanted, but it was just like, yo, fuck Ben Riley. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> yo, they, they got it. You were spotty. They got to take a dump on you. Bro, it's, it's just like, come on, man. Can't the Spider Man family just be all one? You know, no. front. Nope, because that's how they, they don't want him that way. He has to be the every band. And apparently the Marvel, every people, the normal people, they got to get shadow on. I'm sorry. We're, we're normal people. We got to get shadow on. That's why we can't be happy, Bernard. That's I why mean, That's why. That's why. Peter Parker can't win. I that's mean, why he has to have- Bro, my life is more parallel to Peter Parker's than yours. 
It's like, oh yeah, things are going up. I'm getting ready to move. Get an accident. Can't even use my freaking wrist. The workers' comp screws me over. I lose my job to another job now that pays less, and I got to start over from scratch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you hang in there though. Like Peter Parker. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> I'm the real life Peter Parker, minus the webs. Yeah, and the superpowers. Yeah. And the hot and the hot girlfriend slash wife. Never married. Well, I'm sorry, yeah, never married. <laughs> Marriage? Huh? Peter Parker? When? Yeah, right. Oh God, let me start with that. I don't know. Like, look, th- this goes to both this goes to both companies. Like both big companies. Look, people can be stable and have a, a healthy relationship. All right, and become and, and be vigilantes. All right, they don't have to choose. Okay, what is this nonsense? Yeah, I'm, I, this is why Dick, this is why Dick Grayson's book is, is selling so well. They like that he's in a healthy relationship with Barbara. They like that he has uh, long lasting relationships with his parents from the Titans. Okay, I like that he's pull, he's going back and saying, "Hey, what's up, Wally? Yeah, hey, that's actually, Donna. Yeah, uh, that's hey, what's up, Norm? Raven? Hey, Vic." What's up? Y'all got my back? Cool. It's like, I like that he has, a, like, Peter, where are his friends at? Okay, so that's the thing. So I was actually going to find the TikTok and post it in here because you sent it to me a while back. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can find it. But, oh, this might be it right here. Yeah, from January 11th. So here's the difference between Peter Parker and Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson has family. Peter Parker doesn't. Uh, it was the other way around. Dick was the orphan. Yeah, but Dick has the Titans. He's got the entire Bat family behind him. It's that's what I mean by family. Nah, Cap, Cap. Okay, he has the Fantastic Four. He has the Avengers. Uh, he's hey, on first. Uh, okay, so you got the Fantastic Four. I give you that one. No one in the Avengers knows who Peter Parker is. The current team, no one knows who Peter Parker is. I don't even think Tony Stark knows. Steve Rogers might know him, but he, he has do Matt. He is Matt. He is Luke. He is he no, is here's no, my no 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 no. Luke is the mayor. Luke can't be affiliated with superheroes right now. He's running damage control on everything Wilson Fisk did. All right, uh, nonsense. Matt, Matt has no recollection of who Peter Parker is. Peter Parker knows who Matt is because they did to Matt. I mean, they did to um yeah, they did to Matt, but they did to Peter. So everyone forgot who Matt was, unless you know he took his mask off, or you find like some type of weird superhero loophole like Kingpin did with um. With um, with Purple Man's power. Where, where, where is where is Silver Sable? Where where is she at? She's back in uh her country, Sabalina. She's running it. She's basically the president. Dang. All right. Well, you know what? That's the thing. Problem. They don't got the consistency. Yeah. This is funny. This is funny. 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 So this is the one time Marvel's consistency is 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 actually subpar in comparison to uh to to DC. Yeah, I actually I actually have the uh, the reply to the TikTok. So I'm actually gonna play the audio right now. If it plays, come on now. I guess it doesn't want to play. I tried, man, but I'll just—it's it's it not that—it's not that big. Of, it's honestly a random person, anyways. Yeah, but basically, that's it. Peter Parker has no family, and that's a god thing. Shame. It's like he—no, that—that's a credit to his character. It's like you've been out how long, and you don't have any long-lasting Samir. friendships. Samir, three words. You ready? Uh huh. One more day. I'm sorry. Well, you know what? They screwed the character up, and that's why. And that's why. It, it, that's why it sucks to read Amazing Five Man right now. That's why it's like it's like torture porn. It's like, dude, they just he's getting tortured every day. He takes L's every time. Oh, uh, here it goes. Let's play it real quick. It's only two minutes. You want to know why the current Nightwing comics are so much better than the current Spider-Man comics? It's all because of a little thing called character development. See, the problem that I and a lot of other comic book readers have with Zeb Wells' current run of Spider-Man Colin Kaepernick, those chains were adamantium. To regress what? The where the hell did Tombstone get adamantium? That's like expensive. Drain like the damn spider know, in the water I'm spout. Gonna These motherfuckers broke up his relationship with Mary Jane after Nick Spencer just spent several story arcs bringing them back together. He's hated by most of his closest friends and family because of something he did several months ago that the writers still won't tell us what it is. It's at insult 
insult to injury, they have this scene where Spider-Man gets trapped by regular ass titanium chains that he somehow can't break out of. I've seen this man hold up entire buildings with nothing but his own two hands. And you're telling me he can't break out of basic ass titanium chains? Getting his ass Okay, by so Tombstone was, was going to go kill Robin Sutton, whose name ago, I continuously forget. Set, but at so he wasn't career, begging for his life, he was begging for someone else's while being tied down with an adamantine chains. The fact that they have him out here begging for mercy from fucking Tombstone is just emasculated. Tom Taylor's Nightwing series, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Because instead of having Dick Grayson regress or take five steps back, this story pushes him forward. It takes the best parts of his continuity in comic book history and builds on them to create something even better. In the current ongoing storyline, Dick Grayson is using his inheritance money to run for mayor to create a positive change in his community of Bloodhaven. Because he wants to do more for his community than just putting out fires and punching out street muggers. Using his newfound wealth he wasn't running from here. Long lasting impact than being a vigilante ever could. Which is something Spoiler that alert, Batman Dick Grayson has a sister who's actually the mayor. His romance with Barbara Gordon, proving that a superhero can be in a relationship while still being relatable to the audience. What, what a baffling, unprecedented idea! It also builds on Dick Grayson's other pre existing relationships without just torpedoing all the friendships and connections that he has just for drama's sake, while also introducing new elements into the overall lore. It still has Dick Grayson facing challenges in his life that he needs to dig down deep to overcome, but every obstacle that Dick Grayson faces is for the sole purpose of making his character stronger, not putting him through the meat grinder just for shits and giggles. Unlike the current Spider-Man comic, which is just a masturbation session of misery, Tom Taylor's Nightwing succeeds in every area where Zeb Wells' Spider-Man fails. And if Marvel would just humble themselves and take some notes from this series, maybe they could still salvage the Spider-Man character. But after what I've read of this series so far, I wouldn't hold my breath. So, um, the fact that he said that Nightwing's run just doesn't you know, bring in, you know, his family and friends for fan service. Kind of what it did. Like, almost every single arc, someone is showing up for... Yeah, but that's what <laughs> friends do. You hang out, okay? This no, week, they're not hanging out. They're coming to help. Same Marvel difference. the only one who lives in Bloodhaven, okay? So, Blockbuster, who was the main villain of this arc, mm -hmm. blew up Dick's apartment building because, like he said, Dick's using his inheritance to basically fight crime. But he's not running for mayor because his sister is the mayor. Wally sees that on the news. Wally runs over, literally digs through the rubble to the point where his hands are pretty almost broken. Um, they're trying to track someone down. Wally's on that trip with them. You know, something's happening with Blockbuster. Guess who shows up? The Titans to protect Dick Grayson. Something, yes. else, something else happens. Guess who shows up? Superman. Something else happens. Guess who shows up? John this Chan. is okay. Pause, pause, pause. This is what I'm talking about every oh, time something goes down. Saying, I'm just basically saying this. But that's not fan not service. Not that's not fan service. That's friends helping you I out. I get that. Okay. But also, more comics should do that. Okay. I, I was, once again, I get that. But once again, this art should have just been called Nightwing and Friends. Because <laughs> everyone, everyone showed up. I forgot. I forgot. Beast Boy lost an eye. He's he's rocking an eye patch. Yeah. Deathstroke stabbed him in the eye. He can't grow it back. No. That's not how his healing factor works. That's he weird. Only, he only heals like from something that happened to him in animal form. I guess, but like, like can he get a cybernetic one? Possibly. But yes, Tom Taylor writes Nightwing very well. And people just started to shit on Zeb Wells during his first arc with the whole Adamant team change and get chains and getting, you know, beat up by Tombstone. Look, all I'm saying is. People are tired. They're tired of the same nonsense. Peter's up, he's down. He's up, he's down. He's down, he's down, he's down, he's up, down, 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 down. That's what that's what his old that's what it is. And I'm saying no, don't give me that. He's the every man. No. People can have consistency and st and stability in their lives. Okay? People keep jobs for, for for 30 years sometimes. They have healthy romantic relationships. They have yeah, long lasting friendship. He didn't have none of that. He never has it for long. That's a problem. Okay, before one more day, Peter and Mary Jane were married for, I want to say, since the 80s, and they kind of got separated in the 90s, and Straczynski brought them back in the 2000s, and then one more day happened, so what was the one more day? Like, I want to say, like, 2007, 2008? So yeah, Peter, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, the, 2000, that's a long time, bro. That's that's old, that's, that's what, hang on, what, we have 14, no, no, 15 years? No, okay, yeah, but he wasn't single that whole time. He got back with Mary Jane. Briefly. Even then. He was dating like in between that. Yeah, Cassie, Casey, the the cop chick, Carly, lady, Carly. There you go. I don't like her. Why? Because she's not Mary Jane. 
No, no, I, I didn't know. She was fine until she got mad that he didn't he tell her. Out, yes. Yeah, I'm like, lady, that's a big secret. And y'all ain't married. You ain't put a ring on it. Do not sit there and assume you are owed to someone's deepest, darkest secrets. That I mean, is, if you told, like, he, no, you can't use that same point because he told Felicia. They are Felicia, Felicia, Felicia been had it. She 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 been around for a long time. All right, that's OG friend right there. Now, if she had an issue with Felicia being as fine as she is, being one of his closest friends, that's something. That's another argument altogether. All right, but the fact that she getting mad that he didn't tell her that he's a superhero, and I'm like, nah, uh, uh-uh, uh, that's no, no, stop the nonsense. That you are not owed a secret that big unless that person is ready to tell you. Okay, I, I can just imagine Samir in this scenario. You didn't tell me you were Spider Man, and this is the reason why I didn't tell you. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Uh, when exactly is it right to tell someone that you're a superhero? They was dating. It's like you, I he didn't know he was gonna be there. Like, how long were they dating? Six months? A year? Uh, in the book. I yeah, in the book. You had to guess. I think maybe roughly a year and a half, two years. Was it that long? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. We want that man. <laughs> All right, Pete Trippin, a little bit, a little bit. All right, two. that's a long relationship. Two years, he could have married her. All right, what the hell are you doing so long? Seriously, was it really that long? It was roughly that long. In our time or their time? Our time. Bro. Okay, well, hold on. If I that's don't know that how time, long it would have been in then, time. Then that's, like, that's like six months. That's like six months uh, to maybe maybe close to a year. Maybe that's that was like, Samir, maybe that was like four days, because keep in mind, we've talked about this before. Dark Hawks, Dark Hawks brothers are still kids, and they were kids in the nineties. If you got, if you get limboed, you you don't age know, most of the time. I'm, I'm but Pete joke. has a constant book. You can actually age the entire uh, Marvel universe by Peter Parker. Okay, that's how consistent his aging is. Peter Parker, the X Men, and the Fantastic Four. Because Johnny, yes. Johnny was a teenager in the sixties. Don't, yeah, don't get me started on Don't get me started on Johnny Storm and his character development. I don't know. Johnny, Johnny, we we we've already talked about Johnny Storm fuck it up and uh, cheating on his uh his uh his um his soul bound with Doctor Doom's fiance. And keep in mind, those soul bands allowed you to feel everything the person was going through. So when he cheated, she felt it. That, that that's that, I'm sorry, scumbag. Like okay, if that's what you want to make the character fine. Oh, let lean into it. He's not a scumbag. Do not try to make us like him. After that behavior like that, that is downright almost abusive. Well, he 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 manned up and he apologized, but then after this fact that Doom found out, Doom amplified his power so he couldn't flame off. Bro, he burnt the arm off the Statue of Liberty. Peter had to web it back and had to go to get Reed to like fix it permanently. And Pete, anyway, and, and and Pete went in on him about the about the infidelity about the the um the infidelity. They uh, met at the Statue of Liberty. He's like, bro, you ain't shit. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, so yeah, uh, guys, I'm hanging in there with, with Spider Man. I'm, I'm I'm also reading Nightwing, but all I'm, I'm saying, saying is, is all I'm saying is a character, a character, a character can be in a long lasting, healthy relationship, married, and still be relatable. All right, Batman can still be Batman and been married to one of the baddest ladies in the game. Okay, uh, you know what editorial editor, editor said. No, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think that I think that Batman can be uh, in a relationship that makes him lame. I'm sorry, lame. Any character that can hold down a relationship, all right, my book. All right, I'm just saying, not to say that you you can't be happy alone, but this man ain't happy. He ain't never happy. All right, honestly, he needs therapy. Honestly, I'm just waiting till they decide to kill off Wiccan since him and um Teddy got married. Oh. But um, let's go ahead. I mean, they've been married for a minute, though. Like maybe like just under a year. This happened in our in time. Empire. In yeah. our time. Yeah, this happened in Empire. Empire maybe was like last year. Like I think it ended the beginning of 2022. But yeah, let's get into our review of episode three of The Last of Us, titled "Long Long Time." This one was actually directed by Peter Hoare. H O A R, not. W H O R E. He's also directed episodes of the Umbrella Academy. Uh, the show is a sin that aired in the UK in Daredevil. But uh, uh, also, Netflix, Netflix yeah, Daredevil. I mean, no, not the movie. I'm talking about TV. He's primarily done TV, so he did Cloak and Dagger. He did Alter Carbon, Runaways. Uh, 
I actually liked most of those shows. The Last Kingdom. Uh, he did an episode of Iron Fist. It looks like he did an episode of the. It might be one of the good. Might want to get up close to Iron Fist. Iron Fist had good episodes now. Yeah, but every episode with Finn Jones in it is not a good episode. That's all the episodes. Exactly. And no, and 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 I'm telling you, there were some okay good episodes of, of, of Iron Fist. The overall series sucked. Yeah, he directed also. Uh, so it looks like Doctor Who. So he's cool in my book. And Da Vinci's Demons. Oh. Huh. All right. Uh, episode was written by, no, don't take me back to your horror. I want to say uh, uh, Craig Mazin. So, show, co showrunner with Neil Druckmann. Obviously, stars Pedro Pascal, Bella Ramsey. Uh, guest appearances from Anna Torv, who plays Jess, Nick Offerman, who plays Bill, Murray Bartlett, who plays Frank. So, synopsis of this episode is. When a stranger approaches his compound, survivors of Bill forges an unlikely connection. Later, Joel and Ellie seek Bill's guidance. So the episode actually picks up where episode two ended with them, you know, um, in the woods after Tess sacrificed herself so Joel could get Ellie to Bill and Frank. Uh, we come across a old gas station where Joel has stashed some stuff from the last time he was there. And he obviously cannot find that cannot remember where it was, and Ellie gets kicked out by seeing a very old Mortal Kombat 3 arcade game. Is it still old yet? No. And so Ellie wanders off and goes behind the grocery store, and she goes into the basement where she comes across a pack of tampons after Joel said everything was already cleared out, and she also finds an infected and Ellie's giving me Dexter vibes, bro. Like, ever right. since episode one, when Joe beat that guy to death because she's just smiling, bro, her with that one infected in the rubble, just like with the knife, just, I'm getting serious. I mean, how I'm often getting... do you get, yeah, but imagine how often they're not, they're never that close to one of them without get while having to kill him immediately. And I she know. hasn't been out, she hasn't been out of the foot wall yet. That's like her first encounter where she's really close to one and actually gets a chance to examine it. Yeah, but everyone's saying that online, she's like, bro. Ellie's got like some emotional problems or something. She's giving Dexter. Uh, back. yeah, it's called trauma. It's a little. It's it's it's, it's like kind of common in the apocalypse at the society collapses. I don't think Ellie has any trauma because that's all she knows. No, it, 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 she, no loss is lost, dude. All right, spoiler alert. All right, she lost a friend when she got bit. Yeah, but um, so they leave the gas station and. Like going to town, and you know, Joe tells Ellie, "Let's not go that way." And once again, kids come across a charred mass, a grave. mass grave of charred bodies who were promised to be taken to quarantine zones. And at that point, we flash back to 2003, where we see Bill's hometown is being cleared out, but Bill decided to hide in his bunker until everyone was gone. And I can't remember what he what the exact quote was, but he basically called um, Fedra some jackboot fucks. And Bill just basically goes to town with everything he needs. He he gets natural gas, he gets actual gas, he goes to Home Depot, he builds a fence and everything. And Bill's just basically living his best survivalist life in his town. And at this point, he's literally he could he could have named the town Bill's Town, population one. And then we jump to four years later, where an individual named Frank gets caught in one of Bill's traps. Frank tells tells Bill that he hasn't been infected. And he's like, why do you hesitate? And then it becomes a whole thing. And um, Frank actually, um, I mean, Bill actually shows Frank some kindness and offers Frank food in the shower. And, and um, I can't remember, a nice Bordeaux to pair with the rabbit and the carrots. And uh, Frank realizes that, you know, this house is dusty. He's basically trying to, I don't want to say weasel his way in. To he, his, that's not what he did. Well, I'm, yeah, well, he's kind of sort of. He's like, yeah, I can kind of be useful around here. Because remember, he got up, he went over to the counter and it was dusty as shit. He's like, yeah, this is, he can make this house a home, more or less. That's, that's basically what it was, dude. Uh, and, um, so he goes to the piano. He plays a song called Long, Long Time. 
I'm trying to find out who wrote the song, actually. And I forgot the lady's name. Linda Ronstadt. Oh, yeah. Yes. They, just, they said it. They actually said it, yeah. Yeah, I just couldn't remember. And uh, Bill's like, no, don't, don't write. I mean, don't play this. And Bill actually played this song. And then he, um, Frank stops him. He says, you know, who's the girl? And Bill says, it wasn't a girl. And Frank's like, kissed. I know. Yeah, he's like, I know. And, you know, they obviously develop a relationship because, you know, guys, spoiler alert for all you dumb fucks who decided to review bomb this on IMDb. That's what their situation was in the game. The only difference was you get to see it this time. Yeah, you get to see it. And, you know, we get a flashback to uh, I think we jump forward like five years later at that point, And they're having an argument literally in the street about, you know, you know, wanting to turn this Bill's town into, you know, a, um, I think it's the fucking word he used. I can't home? remember. Something? No, no, the whole town. Because remember, he wanted to paint and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, he was like, yeah, we're going to have friends. And he was like, we don't have friends, okay? And, but we will. And so yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, he was like, oh, we will. And he was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, I've been talking to someone on the radio. What do you mean you've been talking to someone on the radio? And you find out that, you know, it's Tess. It's Tess, yeah. Yeah, they all... Shout out to them giving Anna Torb a better wig. Obviously, you know, things are a lot better because, you know, she's not as old and, you know, less stressed. So they're sitting in front of the house eating a dinner and, you know, Bill on his survivalist stuff um, has his gun, like, right there at the table, pointed at Joel. And then um, Tess and uh, Frank go in the house and Joel and Bill have a conversation. And this was quite possibly one of the favorite parts of the of the show, Joe says, oh, Tess is like, you guys get along. You're just like each other. And so Joe says to Bill, so are you a gun-toting schizophrenic? He's like, no, I'm not a gun-toting schizophrenic. No, he said, are you a doomsday prepper is what he said. No, uh, a doomsday, a gun-toting doomsday prepper. Yeah, that's what it was. He's like, no, I'm not a gun-toting doomsday prepper. I'm, I'm a survivalist. <laughs> yeah, survivalist, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know. There's Joel's a difference. Got, yeah. <laughs> Joe was obviously trying to make you know, build some sort of camaraderie with Bill so, you know, they can barter and whatnot. And he tells him, you know, that fence isn't going to last more than a year. It's pretty much rusted out, but I can get you 10 rolls of aluminum steel and it guarantees you the rest of your life. And that, you can obviously look on Bill's face where he's like, hmm, maybe. And then, like, we jump forward, like, a few more years and some raiders actually come and they saw Bill's traps and Bill gets shot and you, and you think, this is the end of Bill because he says, call Joe, he'll protect you. But once again... Which is actually a testament to how much he cares yeah. about uh, Frank. Joe. No, how much he trusts Joe. Yeah, trust, yeah. Because he don't, he, don't, he don't... Yeah. Uh, and then we jump forward a few years and we find out Bill's still alive and um, Frank is actually the one who's on his last legs. And I was actually listening to the official Last of Us podcast with uh, Troy Baker, who provided the voice of Joe in the video game. Greg Mason and Neil Druckmann, the showrunners. And they don't say it in the show. I guess they didn't want to allude to it because it? they don't necessarily have doctors. Yeah, what is it, ALS? They said it was possible ALS or MS. So multiple sclerosis or ALS. And um, it's basically Frank's last day to live. And um, Well, he chose his last day. He had more yeah, time. Yes, he, he yeah, he chose this to be his last day, so he wanted to do all the things that they didn't do. So um, they got married. They had a nice dinner, which was basically parallel to the first dinner that they had. It was the exact same dinner, same wine, rabbit, carrots, vegetables. And um, they they died together. And there's actually a quote from, from the play, The Boys in the Band, I can't remember what it was. It was basically like, um, this is not like the last goodbye or something. It's something that Bill says to Frank. But yeah, um, they went out, you know, together because I, I don't know if you saw it. A lot of people apparently didn't catch it, but Bill but also you know, took the pill. Yeah, they yeah, they didn't catch that. Yeah. It's like they, they had Tom said, he said, I should be angry, but. It actually is kind of, uh, and also he he went with this whole spiel about how he's old 
he's satisfied yeah. and he does he like you were my yeah. purpose. Yeah, it's like purpose. It was it was romantic yeah. as hell. Yeah. And um after that we, we jump back to present day where um with Joel and Ellie and Joel realizes something's wrong because like you know the 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 lawn is overrun and um the house is collected dust again. And so he goes upstairs and he goes to Bill's room and But he doesn't open the door. Well, yeah, he doesn't open the door. Well, he peeked in, so that's why he didn't open the door. Like he opened I don't think he even opened it. No, 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 no it I think was, something was up against the door. That's why he it didn't was, open no, it. No, it was locked. The door the room was locked, if I'm not mistaken. And no, he, they the door op- was open. Well, regardless, the, the the note says don't go in the room. Yeah, but we'll he didn't see that yet. I don't, he, he didn't. He didn't go Ellie in because he, he asked. He asked Ellie, "Oh, they're dead, aren't they?" And she's like, "Yeah." So he didn't go in. No one saw him. I know, they didn't. Dis- the, they didn't disturb remember, that room. The room was know, not disturbed. I know, but remember, he went upstairs first, and then Ellie found the note. So, okay. if you recall, they moved their room downstairs because it was hard to get Frank up and down the stairs. Their bedroom was downstairs at that point. Yeah, there I was mean, no, there was no wheelchair thing I on that. But, but Bill probably could have carried him up the stairs. No, Bill was old. He can't carry another grown man up the stairs all the time. He throws back out. Hmm. I didn't say he, all the time. I'm just saying that last time. Every day? Bill, twice a day? Samir, on their last night. No, he's on a, they carried him to bed downstairs. He was old, too. But, yeah, so there's, there's actually a nice note. Um, I really wish I had the audio, but I don't. But it basically says, hey, man, I never liked you. Uh, I'm leaving you all my guns, my rations, take whatever you need and use it to protect Tess. Well, he said, he said, I never liked you, but I do respect you. So I guess that's kind of makes his friends of sorts, is what he said. Yeah. And yeah, the kicker and the kicker was that he left all that stuff so he can protect Tess. And it's like, mm, yeah. that hurts. Yeah. And at this point, um, Joel and Ellie take a nice hot shower. They are literally in their video game clothes now. They get into uh, Frank's busted ass truck, which Ellie calls a spaceship, and Linda Ronstadt is playing. And Ellie attempts to change it, and Joe's like, "No, no, no, leave it." And, but he lays down the ground rules, like don't talk about tests and so on and so forth. And they ride off into the sunset. And the last thing we see is the open window in the yeah, bedroom. It's the open window, which is parallel to the opening of the first game. So. Yeah, this episode got review bombed on um, IMDb because people can't take gay shit. Which is why I never take user reviews. Yeah, I mean, I, I take them with a grain of salt. Like, if you're going to review bomb something just because it's, you know, gay, then I'm not going to look at it. So, the main difference between this episode and the game is Frank's alive. Hmm. <sighs> Yes. Game, well, you Frank see him dead. alive. Yeah. Yes. Well, in the game, Frank is dead. Frank actually gets infected and decides to hang himself. I actually found a screenshot of the letter that he left Bill. So it says, well, Bill, I doubt you ever find this note because you were too scared to ever make it to this part of town. But if for some reason you did, I want you to know I hated your guts. I grew tired of this shitty town and your set in your ways attitude. I wanted more from life than this, and you could never get that. And that stupid battery you kept moaning about, I got it. But I guess you were right. Trying to leave this town will kill me. Still better than spending another day with you. Good luck, Frank. I forgot forgot how bad that note was. Oh, that hurts my heart because they were so in love in the the TV show. So So, I like they They got to the point in the game where, you know, Frank's like, you know, I mean, Bill's like, you know, yeah, once upon a time, I did have a partner, but, um, you know, having a partner sucks or something along those lines. I'm not just going to find the audio or that part of the game and just, like, put it in here. But, yeah, I was like, ooh, I forgot about that because it's been a minute since I played the last couple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. A partner. Somebody I had to look after. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing, getting you killed. So you know what I did? I wisened the fuck up. And I realized it's got to be just me. Bill, it ain't, it ain't like that. It's bullshit. 
It is just like that. Hey, what I say to you when we walk down the steps? What I say? I'm just fixing your stupid pile. Don't touch. God damn it. You keep babysitting long enough, and eventually it's going to blow up in Bill, your face. Can we please just get on with it? Here. Let's get on with it. Jesus. What, do you know this guy or something? Frank. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. He's the only idiot that would wear a shirt like that. He's got bites. Here. And he... Reckon he didn't want to turn, so he... Yeah, I guess not. Well, fuck him. Look what I found. It's got some juice in it. That's my battery. That fucking <laughs> asshole. Get out. Get out. Okay. Jeez. Battery's drained, but cells are alive. Meaning? Meaning we push it, get it started, and the alternator will recharge the battery. Is that your guess? Look, you wanted a plan B. This is as good as it gets. What are you thinking? Can you drive and we push? Jesus. That's more of my stuff. So what? You just, just gonna steal my shit and run off? Is that it, Frank? You should probably search the house. I'm sure there's more supplies. It's a good idea. Let me know when you're ready to finish this thing. I'll give you a holler. Ready? You want to be okay with this? Yeah, not a problem. You're doing a good job. I figured you should know that. I won't let you down with this. Part one. And honestly, watching this show makes me want to get the remake. <laughs> it's well, it's coming. It's already out, isn't it? I know it's already out. It's um, but it's seventy dollars. Well, I'm buying it on PC when it hits in March, I think. Yeah, they said I think March 18th or something like that. Something like that. But I hopefully it'll be on sale on Black Friday or something like that. But bro, I was like, I forgot how bad it got for those two. Um. So on this on the note of that, it's like I think I like uh, obviously this one's better. Well, not obviously, but I feel this you, you one's prefer better. This one, yeah, it's like it flushes out the characters more. It gives you more, it, you know, it, g- it gives you more insight to them as as people. And yeah, I'm sorry, it's more it's more satisfying watching their relationship run its course and have its romantic and highly emotional end. You know, yeah. I mean, as opposed to, you know, <laughs> that letter. Dang, they, they got toxic. <laughs> like, yo. I mean, people say, I mean, it, it just must really suck being um, uh, gay in the uh, apocalypse. It's apocalypse. like, it's, it's hard. I would imagine gay dating is already kind of hard in some places of the country, at least in the United States. And it's like, if you, like let's say you live in like freaking um, Wisconsin or, um, or, or some other really podunk. Like Wyoming, you know, there's the, the dating pool is going to be small there. You know, it's not like you're living in New York or you're L.A., right? And it's like, do you imagine if like like ninety percent of the population dies? Like, oh, what is going on now? 
You know, like well, you just gonna have to resign yourself to be alone. And then they find each other and they find themselves. And the problem is, it's like you have to wonder. Okay, well, they kind of got forced together, so it's like would they have dated each other if they had the options. Who knows? Right, but in this case, they were they were they they made it work, and uh, you know it was beautiful. Whereas in the game, it's like they were just putting up with each other because that's all they had. I, I don't know. The, the the criticism for this show is so weird because you have one side, of, like one side of the room is like, uh, gay stuff, blah 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 blah, you know. And then there's other there's other uh, side of the room is like, you know what, Bella Ramsey's ugly, and it, and I don't like her. She's not pretty enough to play this character. I'm like, my God, Ellie, the the character is like 14. What are you doing right now? Yeah. You're telling on yourself. All right. Now, I think Bella Ramsey's 19, but that's beside the point. Is she 19? I think she is. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. Holy shit. I, I really got to watch uh, Catherine call Birdie. She's five foot one. Damn it, she's never going to grow in the Ellie height. <laughs> did Ellie get taller? Yes, yeah, she did. She was almost Joel's height in part two. No, she wasn't. Yes, she was. What was Ellie's last name in um in Williams? It's Williams. Williams. Yeah, Ellie Williams. Okay. Yeah, you don't remember because um. You I know she's that. a I know she's a lanky woman towards her you know her early twenties, late teens. Yeah. yeah. No, she's not. She okay. Look, Ellie's height in the last of us part two is five five. She's not tall at all. How tall is Joel in the last of us part two? Average man height, so like five eleven, six feet. Uh, I guess. He's like 5'10 and 5'11, uh, between 5, yeah, in the first one, and Ellie's 5'3 in the first one. Yeah, and well, on the last of us wiki. Is this for the game or is this for the Yeah, she's 5'5. Five, five. So, yeah, 5'11 and a half. Oh, uh, yeah. No, she's five five. No, I'm see. Joel is five eleven and a half. Oh, okay. But yeah, mm-hmm. damn. It's just not gonna work for her then. Cause how tall is Pedro Pascal? Like six feet. Pedro Pascal is oh five eleven. But yeah, I mean, very good episode of television. This show just keeps getting better. Some would argue one of the best episodes of television. People complaining. Gay shit. Ah! But yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, And I usually watch the last episode before I watch the new episode, so I'll probably be watching this episode again on Sunday night at 8 p.m. But yeah, guys, I do believe we are going to call it a wrap. So this is Bernard the Scarlet. Ah, God damn it. This is Bernard, a.k.a. The Scarlet Spider, a.k.a. Limited Run Games. Give me back my $200. And this is Samir, the King in Black. And we are the Angry Blurreds Podcast. Join us next time. Same Blurred channel, same Blurred network. All right, so um, what, where are we on Knock at the Cabin? Uh, we're going to review it. It's at a 68%. It, it, it's, it's met your quota, Samir. It's met your quota. I'll try to, I'll try to pencil it in. All right. So we're going to try to review Knock at the Cabin. <clears throat> uh, what day is Tuesday? Oh, wait, that's the 7th. I'm tripping. I'm like, I get paid. No, I get paid on the 15th. So I might have to just uh, scrounge together a couple quarters. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy. But yeah, guys, we will, like I said, attempt to review Knock at the Cabin. But yeah, that's it for this week. So be sure to rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Keep watching The Last of Us. Oh, please check out the official podcast. Um, it's everywhere you can get podcasts. So, like, if you want a little bit more deep dive information, like some some stuff I obviously forgot because I listened to it maybe like on Tuesday or something like that, just listen to it. It's actually pretty good. You get insight from the creator, of, well, the co-creator of the game, the co-creators of the show, and the guy who did the voice of Joel in the game. But yeah, so that's it. So we'll see you next week. Peace. I almost hit the wrong button. There we go.